My name is Ms. Kim, and I'm so excited to join you today. So we're going to be making a what's known as a three-dimensional card that is in inspired by the artist Kandinsky. So he was a great Russian artist who used a lot of abstract colors, and he was known for the Expressionism movement and the art movement. So again, we're going to actually create a card which has a three-dimensional look to it for Mother's Day. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first items that we'll need is our actual card. So this is a sample of what we're going to be looking at or what we're going to actually create. Okay, so I'm just going to put my sample to the side and I'm going to walk you through how to actually make this card step by step. So the first thing that I have, you want to have what's known as a card stock, which is a little bit of a heavier paper. Now, before I fold mine, this was actually cut from an 11 by 14 size paper. So I literally cut one in half, my 11 by 14 paper, and then I'm just gonna take my paper and fold it in half because you're gonna actually be able to write any message that you would like inside for your card, okay? So again, you wanna fold your card stock Hard stock means this is just a heavier duty type of paper, okay? So a nice, heavy quality paper. And then what we're going to also need are a pair of scissors because we'll be doing a lot of cutting and construction paper. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create an arm because I want to make the appearance of my card holding the flowers. So this is going to, you, you're going to use any type of construction paper, um, preferably color, because obviously construction paper comes in many different colors. So again, if you do have, um, you know, you can get this from any store, any art store, um, any main uh, chain. So you want to just make sure you have something that has a nice variety of colors. You can use any color that you'd like for skin tone. So I'm going to use this more of a beige color for the skin tone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an arm with a hand, okay? So for you at home, you may want to draw this with a pencil. I'm going to draw mine with a Sharpie, a permanent marker, because I want you to be able to see the line that I am drawing on my paper, okay? So just follow along. I'm just going to move my card right here to the top. I actually don't need my scissors just quite yet, so I'm going to put that to the side. And what I'll do is I'm going to start with the arm. So just follow me before you start. It's gonna look a little odd. It's not gonna be a, a what's called a normal shape hand and arm, but that's okay. Just follow me. So this is gonna represent the arm. And then I'm gonna loop this line around. That's gonna be my thumb. Okay, and then I'm just gonna make fingers little bit exaggerated and there's a purpose for that. So we're going to make four fingers and again we already have our thumb. So here's one, two, three, and then notice that my fingers are getting a little bit shorter as I go down the down the arm and then four. And I'm just going to kind of loop this in and come off the paper like so. Okay. Now I'm going to put my Sharpie pen to the side. Now you can grab your scissors, okay? And go ahead and cut out your arm. So again, I'm going to cut mine, and I'm going to try to cut out as much of my Sharpie lines as I possibly can, because I don't want this to show up on the actual card itself. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this out. And try your best to cut along your pencil lines. You can go a little bit longer off the paper, down the paper than what your lines actually represent. Okay, and I'm just going to continue to cut our fingers. If you're like me, you want to just kind of keep turning the paper because it makes it much easier as you're cutting instead of just trying to keep it in a very straight line. But I'll try to keep mine as straight as I possibly can just so you can follow me at home. <laughs> Cut 
setting. Go around that thumb, around that thumb, around, and stop. Go off the tape. Okay, great. I think I did a good job getting pretty much all of those sharp lines out of there. Okay, so. Once you're done with your skin tone paper, you just toss that to the side, and then this is what it's going to look like. So we're not gonna paste anything down quite yet, okay? I'm just gonna put this oops, <laughs> right here to the side, so you're gonna see what we're gonna need to paste. So the next item, we're going to create the stems for our flowers. So I'm going to use green. You know, obviously green is more of a traditional organic color for flowers. So notice how I'm going to cut this. I'm gonna cut it. Here, let me actually draw it for you first. Okay, so I'm gonna start about this high off of my paper, uh, not having an actual ruler, but if I were to measure this, this is gonna be approximately two, three, about four and a half, almost five inches in height, okay? And I'm just gonna draw my lines. This is gonna represent where I need to cut for my stems. So, and they don't have to be perfectly straight because again, a straight a flower stem is not like a perfectly straight line. That's okay. One, two, and we're gonna need three of these. So just create three stems. Okay. So this is going to be cut, and again, the reason why I'm drawing mine is so you can actually see how thick or how wide you need to cut your paper. So now, again, I'm gonna take my scissors, okay, and I'm going to cut my stems, and I'm gonna try not to include my Sharpie lines, but again, you're, you're using a pencil, so you won't see your pencil lines that way that much. Okay. So this is going to be one stem. Okay. And I don't need this. So I'm just going to put this paper to the side. Okay. I'm going to cut this black line off of my paper again. Just for my sake of not having this really thick sharpie line on my art project, I don't need that. And I'm gonna cut one more line. Oh, one more stem rather. Just gonna go down. Okay, so that's my second stem. So as I cut those, I'm just gonna put that to the side. So I'm gonna put that right there under my hand or arm. And I'm just cutting away, again, this thick, sharpie line. Because we want our artwork to be nice and clean. All we want is construction paper. All right, so that's gonna represent my three stems. Now, I'm going to select three colors for my flowers. Now, for you at home, if you want to use more than three colors, Please feel free, you can use as many colors as you'd like. I'm gonna actually make three circles, okay? Three different side circles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, actually, I'm gonna put all three of my colors out. So again, for you at home, if you want to use more than three different colors, please feel free to do so. But I'm going to, again, for the sake of my project, I'm just gonna keep it simple and use three different colors. Now I'm gonna draw three circles on each paper. So three sets of circles. So I'm gonna start with a large circle for my yellow. And then I'm gonna draw a medium size and a small circle, okay? And again, just as a reminder, I'm drawing mine in Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing. For you at home, you can do this in pencil, okay? So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna actually turn, because I have a smaller piece of paper here. So I'm gonna try to draw the same sizes on my red paper. So a large circle, 
and try your best. I mean, they don't have to be perfect circles, but try your best to make them as round as you can. A medium circle and then a small circle. Okay, so that again represents my second set. I'm going to shift that over. I'm just going to turn that to the side. And this is purple. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a large purple circle, a medium size, and a small. Okay. All right. So now that you can see, I have three sets of circles, almost the same size. Okay. Now, if you want to be creative and maybe make yours different sizes, you can definitely do so, but there is a reason why I've made mine this size, okay? So all we need to do now is cut out on a circle. So now I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm gonna just put my yellow and red one to the side here and I'm gonna start with purple. Okay. And again, I outlined my circles in Sharpie, so I'm gonna try my best to cut out as much of that thick black line that I possibly can. Okay. There's one. You know, I can actually just cut on top of that line and I can just turn my paper over. Here's two. So almost done. So even if I have a little bit of my Sharpie line here, I'm just going to be able to turn it over. And I'm just going to put my circles right here to the side. And three. So again, the artist's name was Kandinsky. He was a Russian artist, and he used a lot of really bold colors, a lot of primary colors. Primary colors, again, those are just colors that are already made. So he used a lot of primary colors such as blue, yellow, red. Um, he did use other colors, but I know he used quite a bit of those colors in his artwork. And he was known as what's called an expression artist. So an expressionism or the movement of expressionism really used a lot of emotions in their artwork because they really wanted to display a lot of emotion in the uh, artwork that they um, created. All right, so as we are, and if you're familiar with uh, one of Kandinsky's famous paintings, he had a lot of circles, which were uh, almost like an Andy Warhol style, where he's had a lot of circles down a row. So I believe there's like nine circles and they had different colors in them. Very beautiful. Very simple. It looks simple, but it's not a simple artwork. <laughs> and three. So I'm done with my yellow. So I'll put that one to the side. And then all I have left is my red. So I'm going to cut out my red. Now, if you are cutting your paper out a little bit faster than me, that's awesome. <laughs> so, I'm almost done. So for those of you who may have already finished cutting out all of their circles, again, if you wanted to add a fourth color, maybe you wanted to make um, a smaller circle, smaller than the baby one we have here, or if you wanted to make a circle that's a little bit larger than this larger one, go ahead and do that if you'd like, because we're going to basically stack these on top of each other, and I will show you what I mean by that in just one moment. I have to keep mine organized like a little game. So I'm going to put my purple one here, yellow here, and then let's put our red right next to it. And three. All right, so now I'm going to put my 
scissors to the side. I'm done with my cutting. So all we need to do now is construct our card, okay? So we're not gonna paste anything quite yet, except for the circles. So I'm gonna take my yellow, and then I'm gonna take purple, the meat, whoops, I did that wrong. So I have my large yellow circle, I'm gonna take my medium purple circle, and then I'm gonna take the small red, like so, okay? This is how we're gonna create our flowers. Next, I'll do my large red, my medium yellow, and the small purple, okay? And then now what I have remaining is the large purple, medium red, and small yellow, okay? So you can see how we've now created three different flowers. Now we are ready to paste. Okay, so I'm using just a you know very simple Elmer's glue, a glue stick. If you have, um, for example, like maybe double stick tape at home that you would rather use, uh, feel free to do so. Um, if you have the traditional white Elmer's glue, if you do have that type of glue, just use a very, very minimal amount, just a tiny bit, because I know that glue sometimes because it's so wet, you don't want to use a lot because then it'll make this paper um, a little too thin and then it'll just kind of what's called pucker and then it'll be a little bit more hard to manage, okay? So again, I'm just going to use glue stick for the sake of my project. And what I'm doing is I'm just gluing my circles here. Double stick tape works great if you want to use double stick tape. And what I mean by double stick tape is there's tape that's made where it's actually sticky on both sides of the tape. It's really cool if you have never used double-sided tape before. Or if you just have regular tape and you want to just kind of tape it over, you can do that as well. <laughs> whatever works for you, whatever materials you have at home but I do not advise to use permanent glue because that's a little too, um, what I call aggressive. It's gonna be a little too strong <laughs> for this project. So you don't need any super glue, nothing like that, okay? And then we have our yellow. Great, so now we have our three beautiful flowers. These are our Kadinsky inspired flowers. And now we're going to take our stems and what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna put my glue stick right here to the side. We're gonna use that in one moment. But again, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just fold our stem in half. Okay, and again, it doesn't have to be like a perfect fold, but just get a nice crease on there. Okay, just enough to where it can lay pretty flat. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the second stem. So we're just gonna fold that over. And I think now you understand why I wanted to try to get as much as my Sharpie pen cut off of my paper because I don't want that to show up on my project. So I'm just gonna fold this over. And then I have one more stem, okay? I'm just gonna Hold this one just like so. Okay. All right. So I hope you're having a good time so far. This is great therapy, as I call it. Just making this special card for special moms. Moms are amazing. <laughs> All right. So we have three stems and we have three flowers. Okay. So now, all we need to do is construct this together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my hand, and if you notice, it's kind of like a very flat, one-dimensional hand. But we're going to do something fun. We're going to actually kind of fold these fingers over. So to make your fingers kind of curl, you can do many different styles. If you want to just take your fingers like me and just kind of put your paper right here, 
and just use your fingers. You're gonna wrap that around your, your middle finger, okay? And then just pinch that together, fold it just like that. So just kind of fold it because we want our fingers on our paper to do exactly what mine just did. So you can just kind of see how it kind of folds over. Kind of like an elastic man. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. So again, just to maybe do that one more time, just to kind of give it that effect to fold and bend. But we are going to glue these fingertips down. So just to kind of get it to fold over. And now what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna take our glue stick again, and we're gonna use our card. Okay, this is our card stock, heavy paper. And we're gonna just kind of position this on, almost in the middle. So I'm just kind of moving my hand out the way so you can see that I'm gonna glue this down right here in the middle. And I'm going to glue down the arm and the thumb. So once I get past the thumb, I'm gonna actually maybe about halfway, yeah, about halfway up to where my fingers meet. I'm going to stop my glue line right there. So you can just kind of see that on the video. This is where I'm gonna stop with my glue stick for now. Okay, so just get a little bit on here. Turn that around, then we're gonna go ahead and glue that onto the paper and try your best to get this back part of your arm to glue down to the very edge of the corner of that card. And just press that down really good. Okay, so now we're gonna glue our flowers on our stems. So I'm going to actually just kind of do a quick measurement, okay? So if you can see, I've turned my flower over and I'm just gonna glue a little bit of the tip of the stem, okay? Cause this is gonna be my tallest stem. So I'm gonna stop mine about halfway. And this is gonna, okay? Oops. Make it a little bit of glue on your finger, that's okay. So you can see where I glue that. Okay, put that one to the side. This is gonna be, this is gonna represent my second one. So I'm just kind of getting an idea here. Let me think. So as I do that, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna now, oh, so this one almost went a little bit past the halfway mark. Okay, so I'm going to glue this like so. And I'm not gonna go all the way to the top, but it's a little bit past the halfway mark. I'm just gonna press this down, okay, oops. So now I'm just gonna lay this here so you can see how far, this one's a little about middle, this is a little bit past the halfway mark. And then this one, I'm definitely gonna just take, or excuse me, not tape, <laughs> I'm gonna glue this stem all the way to the very top of this one, okay? All right. All right, so now we are almost ready to glue these down, but before we glue these down, I'm just gonna play with how I want to position the flowers in the palm of the hand on the paper, okay? So, just want to make sure I like that. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of using my real hand <laughs> and I'm just positioning where I would like to actually paint, or why did I say paint, my goodness, where I want to glue my flowers. Okay. So that's why it's good to visually position these first before you uh, glue these down. So I'm just gonna have to put this one like right over here. Uh, let's see for this middle one. This one's gonna go almost in the center. And then this one, perfect. So if you can see what I'm doing is I'm just using my hand and I'm just kind of holding the fingers down of the paper. 
just to get an idea of where I would like to position my three flowers. So I think it's a really good position for my hand, okay? So I'm gonna just kind of hold that down like so, just so you can kind of see it on the video, okay? So there we have it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scoot this one up, and I'm gonna scoot this one up, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually glue my first stem down to my paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, gonna take this, and I'm just gonna glue the back side of my stem. So I'm not gluing, I am not, again, I'm not gluing the inside because I want this to have a little bit of a two-dimensional look. So don't glue this part. I mean, unless you really want to. But I'm just gonna glue this part, the back side. And I'm going to position mine again right about here. Oops. Again, that's one of the benefits of using <laughs> Elmer's washable glue because if you kind of mess up where you want to put it, that's okay. There we have it. So that one is officially glued down. But for my second one, okay, I'm going to now glue this side. Now, notice I'm not gluing the very top. I'm just going to glue pretty much the whole back side of the stem because that's the part that's going to go on the paper. This is going to go off of the paper a little bit because it's meant for the flowers to stick off of the paper because we're giving it more of a two-dimensional look. Okay, so I'm going to glue this one yep, right about here. Okay. And then again, if you have a little bit of glue that gets onto your cardstock paper, that's okay. Just wipe it up really quick. Okay. So that's our second one. And you can see that it's, it's holding. So that's a good, that's really good. And then we're gonna take our very last flower. And again, I'm gonna glue that one down. So I'm just gonna glue the back side of my stem. And, oops, slide it right here. Just get it past the fingers, just kind of make it angled. Okay, and great. So I'm just going to glue that down. Okay, now you have the option. What I did is I, you notice that on my paper, um, I didn't glue the hand all the way down to the paper because I knew that I was going to need to fold my fingers, the hands a little bit. So you have the option. If you like yours, like mine, where it's just kind of folded right here, a little bit of a tiny fold. Okay, you can just kind of hope to see that. Then just kind of fold that over. Then it gives it, oops, I think my flower just fell off. Let me glue that down a little bit better. <laughs> that happens sometimes with glue stick. So again, if you're using tape, you won't have that issue. <laughs> so let's just glue that down a little bit better. There we go. So now, as I was explaining, if you want to glue your fingertips down, you can. I'm going to leave mine just as it is because I think it gives it a little bit more of that true two-dimensional look, kind of that pop-up look. So there you have it. This is how you create your Kandinsky-inspired flower card. And if you wanted to open up your card and write a nice message in there, maybe if you want to put your name, you know, say something like Happy Mother's Day, I love you. So you definitely have that freedom to do so. Um, but that's how your card will look, okay? Kind of cute. And then last but not least, if you do want your card to sit upright, flat on a surface of a table like mine, and then if you do have your stems right here on the bottom, just kind of poking out so your card can sit very flat on the table. You just want to open up your card, okay? And you just want to cut away those stems, just like if you actually had a real bouquet of flowers. You know how sometimes you have to cut the stems of your flowers at home? Well, you want to do the same thing for your card, okay? 
And then now we have an upright card. All right. So again, I hope you had a great time creating your Kandinsky inspired pop up um, flower card for Mother's Day. And again, my name is Miss Kim, and it's been a pleasure walking you through this project. Have a wonderful day.